All right, hey guys, and welcome to my very first video on this channel, which is going to be solely focused on Kung Fu Panda Battle of Destiny. This is a mobile uh, digital card battle game, very similar to Hearthstone, and it's currently only available on iOS platforms, so iPhone and iPad, and I think it's only available in the United States, but they are expanding in the near future to many other countries and other platforms such as Android so hang in there if you're not within the soft launch. And I just want to quickly say that this game is fantastic. Being a longtime Hearthstone player, this game has a lot of similarities, especially uh, aesthetically and mechanically, but it has its own unique aspects as well. Um, and there's nothing wrong with borrowing from, you know, one of the best card games to ever be released, especially on, um, you know, a digital platform. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be building a deck uh, from basic cards only because this is a new game that only came out a couple of days ago not even a week ago um, i'm gonna build a deck that only uses basic cards so all of you will have these cards uh, except for a few exceptions which ones you have to uh, unlock by playing your class a bit but just to show you my qualifications i'm not rank 25 i'm actually uh, i'm champion rank which is currently the highest rank you can get in the game as you can see, I'm level 23 Mantis, 16 uh, Tigris, and Shen, and Poe, and Crane. Um, I haven't played too much with the Monkey and the Viper. I find them to be some of the weaker classes, but I've played quite a bit of this game. And just to show you, I have almost every card in the game uh, in terms of basics, rares. I'm missing a couple of epics, and um, in terms of legendaries, I have 10 of them as you can see here. So I've been doing quite a bit of purchasing and crafting and whatnot in this game, so uh, hopefully I'm qualified enough to uh, be able to be doing this guide for you guys. So what do you say we jump into it? And the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on collection in the bottom right. And then in the top left, click new. And we're going to go with Tigress because she is the first character class that you get to play as in the game. And I also think she's a great class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter it uh, only by basic cards. So everybody will have these cards except for ones like, uh, I think this one here, like ones like this you have to play. And I think at level two you unlock this and level four you unlock this. Um, so if you don't have any of these class unlockable cards, they unlock pretty fast. You gain levels pretty fast. Just Go into um, the cards that you do have and find a card with the same number. So say you don't have this one, find another card that is too chi cost and just replace it. So for now, let's start building this deck. So you're going to want a mana curve or a chi curve, I should say. Sorry, I'm going to use a lot of Hearthstone uh, terms here until I get used to this. But basically, you don't want to make a deck. If you're new to deck building in these kind of games, you want cards with all the chi costs. So you want one uh, chi cards like this, you want two chi cards like this, and you want three. And gradually as you go higher and higher, you're going to want less and less. So you're not going to want like six or seven, five chi cards. You're going to maybe want two, three, four at the most. Um, and when it comes to six or seven chi or more, you generally only want two, one, two or three of those in your deck. So I don't have a pre-constructed deck. I figured I would do this on the fly just so that you guys get a sense for how I think of deck building and um, seeing me think this through. So first, let's start with the Tigris cards themselves. Um, let's find out which ones are good here, because some of the ones that they give you in the pre-constructed Tigris deck are pretty bad. So, give an undamaged minion, uh, give an uh, undamaged friendly warrior plus two strength and meditate. I don't think that's too great. Uh, meditate basically means that you won't be able to act that turn. However, you can apply that after um, a warrior attacks, but you're not going to want to do that uh, in case it gets killed. It's like a waste of a card. This is a very good guard. You're going to want to include this in basically any Tigris deck, two of them. Uh, this is incredibly powerful. Killing warriors in this game with hard removal cards like this um, are very valuable. So you're going to definitely want two of these, and you can have two of each card, and a deck is 30 cards. This card here is decent. I'm not going to add it yet in case uh, the deck starts getting filled out. We're definitely going to want two of these guys because in terms of two chi cards in this game, this is one of the better ones that you can have early on. Like I said, this is a class unlockable, I believe, so I don't think you have that right away, but just play a little bit and you'll get him. This card here is really good for removal, so very much like Cheap Shot here. Oh, I can't click on it anymore. Here we go. Cheap Shot. 
this can also act as another way to clear your enemy's warriors off the board. I'm going to include one of these for now. I might come back and add another one. This three cost card I think is also pretty decent. Um, for now, let's put one in and maybe come back later and stick in another one. Um, this card here you won't have right away, but there might there's probably better cards than this one in the neutral cards. This card here is one of the best in the game, uh, I feel, right now. It's a little bit um, limited depending on if your enemy is in guard or not, but if it is in guard, 7 range damage is nothing to laugh about. For 4 chi, this can clear almost any warrior in the game that your opponent can throw down if they put them in the guard. Once you become more experienced, this is the kind of card that you're going to want to play around when you're playing against other Tigresses, which is why sometimes I actually don't put my warriors into guard so that I can avoid the extra 3 damage that this card would do. So, you want to include two of these. This is another class unlockable card. This is a very good card. Um, so for now, uh, you know, use another 5 cost card that you think seems pretty good. But when you do unlock this, which is around level 8 or 10, I believe, um, or 6, I forget, there's no way to really tell. Um, I would include two of these because they are fantastic cards. Alright, so we have 20 more cards to add. Now let's go down to the neutrals. This is a card that they put in the basic deck. I think it is absolutely horrible. People play this on turn one. It just gets destroyed by the master, and that's it. It's, it's pretty useless. This is a good card to include two of. I really like it because it's very um, inconvenient for the enemy master because their attack without buffing it does uh, two damage. This is a three health card, so it can act as a really good way to fend off other creatures um, on your board. This is another card that they put in the regular deck, which I think is pretty bad. A lot of people play this card and rush it right into your face and it gets killed. You don't want to do that. There's better one cost cards. So this is a pretty decent one cost. Um, just being able to deal one damage targeted is pretty good. Say that they have a three health warrior. You use this card, you deal one damage to it. It's now two health and then you use your warrior, uh, I mean your master ability and attack them and kill them. So we're going to include two of these. In terms of two chi cost, this one is pretty good. It's good at buffing all of your warriors gain one extra strength. This is a really nice buff card. 1-3 um, is not too terrible early game, so for now, let's include one of those. This is another card that's in the basic deck, which is not the greatest. Having a 1-2 and a 1-1 one, one can be good if you want to guard and put up some extra defenses, but you're going to want a bit of a more hefty body. Um, so that's why I'm going to say go with two of the Musical Mollusk. 2-4 um, are good stats. Uh, unfortunately, there are much better cards at 2 mana or 2 chi once you can uh, unlock them later on. But for now, for what you have, it's one of your best options. Okay, so right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 2-cost cards, which I think is really good. This is another one that's in the pre-construction. Uh, constructed deck that they give you. I think it's one of the worst cards in the game. 2 chi, 4 2 might seem like good stats, but it has meditate. And meditate means that you cannot attack or guard when you play this. So essentially, this is going to die 90% of the time before you get to attack with it. Um, if your opponent knows what they're doing, they're just going to kill it with their master. It's a horrible card. Just swapping the stats around makes a huge difference with the musical models because 4 health is so much more survivability. Helps you clear, it stays on the board, it's more sticky. Okay, so now we're getting into three cost. Um, this is going to be one of the best cards that you can put in your deck for early on before you start unlocking cards. Um, there might be a couple of better options that are common cards, but like I said, this is basic only. So you're going to want to put two of these in because three chi, three five is incredible baseline stats for that level. It's a uh, it has good attack, good health to kind of stick on the board after attacking a warrior. It's really good. This card here is another one that I believe is in the basic deck. 1-7 uh, can be annoying. However, I don't know. I'm just not... I'm not the biggest fan of low attack, high health guard cards. Because you can just look at this for... You get two more attacks, so it's more versatile uh, versatile with the, uh, the gold too. Where you, know, you have a bit more attack. The two health isn't going to make it too much of a difference that you're missing. So I would leave out the Grumpy card. The Proud Brewer. Um, this might be a good option because you don't have many other three cost cards. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five. So let's put in, let's put in two of the Proud Brewer. 
Now, you might be saying to yourself, so wouldn't that just make this card a 3-5, uh, a just like the Gold Tooth? Essentially, you know, because if you look at it, it looks like a worse Gold Tooth. It's 2-4 for the same mana cost, or the same chi cost. But just being able to buff one of your other minions uh, or warriors, 1-1, one, one is, is very um, flexible. Of course, this is a bad card to play when you have no other warriors on the board. But I think it's very flexible. It's a good to have in your deck. Alright, getting down the four cost cards, we only have two scrolls, which are basically spells, so we're going to want to pick a couple of these. This, you know, might not seem special. Um, this is also in the basic deck. Uh, four chief, four five, is actually really good stats. Um, it's good attack, good health. It's very much in line with gold tooth. Um, you're going to want to add two of these to your deck. Alright, so... This is another basic card. You're not going to want to add this. I just... 4 chi is a lot of cost for a 1-8, where a lot of... Especially if you're new, you're going to be playing against a lot of Tigris, uh, who has very easy removal for big cards, just like I said with the uh, destroy any KO'd minion, or deal 7 damage to an enemy in Taunt, or Guard. So this card here is... I really don't like it. However, you're going to want card draw. So, for now, let's put in two of these... 4 chi, 3-3, three, three. not the best stats, but drawing cards, you don't want to lose momentum. You're always going to be playing cards on every turn, ideally. And just being able to draw cards into your hand uh, for, an, you know, essentially, you know, you're sacrificing a bit of stats on this card to be able to draw a card. It's very valuable. Okay, so that's it for the 4 cost. Uh, we're down to 5 cost now. So let's see what we have. We have 5 cards remaining. Uh, this card here is actually a really good card. 5 chi, 5 6, another really good body. Um, I think 3 5 cost cards will be what we'll stick with. You don't want to have too many high cost cards because you don't want to draw them early on in the game and be stuck with them in your hand. This is one of my favorite cards. Uh, I use this actually in a lot of my decks, um, even now. 6 chi, 5 8, it's really great attack. And a really, really good body with five, uh, 8 health. So let's stick in two of these. That's going to be like a really late game finisher. It's, uh, it's just really hard to deal with that card. I actually prefer over the Slugger. Uh, the Slugger... I mean, you get an extra attack, but you lose two health. And I just really like that flexibility of having that two extra health. Because let's say that your, your opponent plays a Slugger. And you play an Assistant Alchemist. Um... They, you'll be able to buff this with the card that gives plus one, plus one. Um, I don't know, there's just, there's just something about that eight health that's really hard to deal with because a lot of basic cards, as you can see, except for this guy right here, don't have eight attack. So they're going to have to attack this with their warrior, uh, another warrior or their master. So I just think it's a great card to have. All right, and we got two slots left. And I think the final two cards that you're going to want to add are two of these illustrious innkeepers. It's a good body. And just being able to add plus one, plus one to all of your other minions, uh, or warriors, sorry. <laughs> going to have to get used to that. Uh, it's just a really valuable ability, especially because it's not a kickoff. Kickoff essentially means it's only an effect that apl applies when you put this, you play this onto the board. Since it is not a kickoff ability that means you can have this be the only card on your board and if you play any additional minions afterwards while this is on your board they will gain plus one plus one whereas if this said kick off your other warriors have plus one plus one that means only when you play this the warriors on your board would gain those stats so it's actually better than it might seem uh, when you first start playing so there we have it um let's just save this deck uh okay so reviewing our our mana cost here, or our chi cost, as you can see, we're very much curved for the early to mid game, um, meaning that one to four chi cost is our focus, and then gradually we have less and less into the late game, which is exactly what you want um, when you're new at building these kind of decks, or basically any time you build the deck, you want to have a curve very similar to that. So let's save, and what do you say we go and try and actually find a game with this deck? So let me select the right deck. Oops, no. It's a little bit finicky to be able to select the right deck that you want. Uh, there we go. Okay. So hopefully we play against a new opponent, uh, someone that's new at the game and someone that's not 
taking too long on their turns because I want to be able to point out to you mistakes that they may make and I'm going to talk you through my decisions um, that I make when I when I you know play cards don't play cards attack don't attack guard don't guard all right so I had quite a few disconnects there and I finally hopefully have an opponent I found a couple of games where they just basically stopped playing or I don't know it was it was bad so hopefully this guy knows how to play so in my opening hand here, um, I'm going to decide not to keep the Proud Brewer just because this card is not going to be good unless I am able to draw a one or two cheat cost cards. So I'm actually going to redraw my entire hand in an attempt to get one or two chi. So there we go. All right, so I'm going first, but this is not the kind of card that you want to play first. You want to hold on to this because he's just going to attack it and kill it. And generally it's best played... Um, when they have a warrior on the board so you can help whittle its health down. So I'm going to pass my turn. Playing that card and dealing one damage to the enemy master is not smart. You typically, or most of the time, unless you're playing a very aggressive deck, you don't want to be using your warriors to attack the enemy master. Um, it's useless to whittle down your own warrior's health for no reason. Typically, you want to build up a board presence early on, and then later on in the game is when you start attacking, when their board is clear and your board is full of your own warriors. So, let's play the Mollusk. This is a great card to play early on, and I'm actually not going to guard. The reason being is there's a card in the game that's a 2-chi, two 2-3. Two it's a monkey-looking card. I forget the exact name. Uh, it's not for the monkey class. Any class can use it. I believe it's a common card. And when you play it, if there's an enemy warrior in guard, it'll do two damage automatically to them due to its kickoff ability. So by not guarding, in case he had that card, I avoided the two damage. So as you play, you'll learn cards that you want to play around. So this is a really great curve. Um, once again, I am not going to attack with either of these. The reason being, I'm not going to attack his master because, well, that'll make my gold tooth a 3-3. Three, three. And that would make my Mollusk a 2-2, which is going to make them a heck of a lot easier for him to defeat with his own warriors. Okay, so this card here that he just played, when it dies, it has a Farewell. Farewell, for those of you that play Hearthstone, is like Death Rattle. When it dies, it will summon uh, two zero two 2 warriors. Not the greatest card, uh, but it can be decent if you're playing a, uh, a deck that's focused around swamping your board with uh, your own warriors. So, what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to put this card to use, kick off, deal one damage to his taunt, and when you're given the option early game, you always want to attack with your master when their warriors have two health. So instead of using my snail, um, I preserved its health. It's still a 2-4, otherwise it would be a 2-2. So now would be the perfect time for me to attack. Let's see, now I have to decide who I want to guard with. Alright, so I'm going to play this bunny. And it gains 2 attack when there's another friendly warrior on the board. But I think I'm going to guard with the gold tooth. And I'm still not going to attack. I know this might seem odd. And if you're a Hearthstone player, you must be like, you're missing damage. Just don't forget, whenever you attack the enemy master, they deal damage equal to their attack to your warrior. So I would effectively be doing two damage to my warriors if I was attacking him right now. Okay, so easy enough. Get rid of this guy. It's a pretty useless card. Um, gonna use my. I'm actually gonna use my rabbit to attack this because I would rather still keep my gold tooth at five health as opposed to put it down to two health. Mm. I'm actually gonna guard with the gold tooth again. And I'm going to play the Archivist. Now, this is where I'm going to start attacking, because as you can see, it's now turn 5. Um, he has nothing on his board, so I'm going to attack him and start dealing damage. 
having my gold tooth and guard is better because it keeps my 5-4, well now 5-4, a bit safer. Just having that one extra health warrior in guard makes all the difference. And then as you can see on my next turn, I'm going to have the Assistant Alchemist. Oops. That's a really good card. That's one of the best monkey cards um, for a board clear. 3 chi, deal 2 damage to all enemy warriors. Helps with board clear. Not all classes or characters in this have board clears. Such as Tigress relies on um, her single target clears, such as killing a damaged warrior or dealing a certain amount of damage to an enemy. With this card right here. So, gonna play this guy. Gonna attack. I'm actually... I'm, hmm, I don't know if I should attack with this. So, instead of attacking with the gold tooth, I'm actually going to guard with this. That's to prevent an obstacle for him to get over. Um, and I'm actually going to guard with this as well, and I'm not going to attack with this. I'm going to hope he doesn't have a spell or something, and I'm going to attack his face to start whittling him down a bit more. But by putting up two guards, it's making it very difficult for him, um, or more difficult than it would have been otherwise for him to get through to my 5-2. So he's probably going to use his warrior here to attack my 1-1, one, one. his, uh, sorry, his master. And then he's going to use his 6-6 six, six to attack the 2-2. Two, two. Or the other way around, it's up to him. Depends if he wants to take one less damage or not by attacking the... Oh, he's going to guard, okay. So that's where, for him, he doesn't know the matchup that well, because he should, he should assume that I have this card in my hand. So since he put it in the guard, he essentially let me kill it for free. Deal seven, 7 damage to a warrior in guard. Okay. Now, as you can see, not attacking with the archivist, or archivist, sorry, uh, was actually a really great decision because now I drew, oops, now I drew my proud brewer, which will let my friendly warrior gain plus 1 plus 1, and this lets him survive yet another turn because now he has 3 health instead of 2. And once again, I'm going to guard with my warriors that would otherwise die if I attacked his enemy master. And I'm guarding with this just to put a one more extra barrier for him to make it difficult to get through to my higher attack warriors. And Tigris actually has a card that you can draw from the chest. And you should be drawing from the chest whenever possible, especially early game. Um, oh. Use another one of those spells. That's fine. Uh, that would give all of my warriors plus three attacks, so it absolutely is a game finisher. Uh, you can only draw one a game, so if I was lucky enough to have drawn that, I would have won last turn, if my math is correct. The move is yours. So he still has four chi, and... See? Putting up that, that pig... But the guard was a good choice, because otherwise he would have attacked this guy. And killed him off. And now I can use this card and buff him up to a 6-3, which lets him survive another round, so he's not killed off on the next attack. However, this card has Meditate, which basically means when you play it, it cannot guard or attack on that turn. It can only take action on the next turn. Because if you're a Hearthstone player, if a card does not say Meditate, it can attack. It's like it has charge. Um, all, almost all the warriors in this game have a charge effect. Uh, it's just built into the game mechanics. So, this is going to give us 6, 7, 8. Unfortunately, not enough yet to finish the game, but we're getting there slowly but steadily. And drawing this card late game is still good because, well... For one chi, it just put up a nuisance for him to have to deal with. He can't kill it with his master outright, so he's either going to have to use a scroll spell, or he's going to have to also attack it with one of his warriors. Let's see if he puts the slugger into guard. The correct choice would be... well, there is no correct choice because he's basically dead. Um, but I would put it into guard, and put the other... Not, there's nothing you can do, I've basically won. 
So, that's the end of the game. <laughs> I just realized there's only a 4 health. But as you can see this game, I early on just kept clearing his warriors, making smart decisions on trading, um, keeping my warriors alive as much as possible, not needlessly attacking to deal damage early on, preserving my warriors until I got a buff or something to uh, let them live an additional turn, and that won me the game. So as you can see, um, this deck does just fine against players that have been playing for a bit. This guy knew what he was doing, because he's a Mock the Monkey, so he's played quite a bit of games with a couple of classes. And uh, let's just play this to see what I draw. Oh, what do you know? Another innkeeper. But let's tap the chest just to show you another uh, equipment card. So this card here is really interesting. Whenever another friendly character attacks, this gains one attack. So if I equip this to this guy, and scroll, it's over. But let's say I attack with him, and I attack with this guy, and I attack with myself. This card keeps getting one attack each time. It's a very, it's one of the best, if not the best, equipment card in my opinion in the game. So there you have it, that's a victory with a deck that you yourself can build. Um, some of those cards you might have to play a couple of games, not too many with Tigris to unlock. In the meantime, just take your best guess and, and substitute a couple of, of the basic cards for those that you haven't unlocked yet. But if you played a couple of games with the Tigris, you should have almost every one of those basic cards unlocked. So there you have it guys, thank you so much for watching my first video, uh, I'm going to be putting up a lot more videos like this, card reviews, deck reviews, game mechanics, game discussion, you name it all, I'll put it up, leave a comment below, let me know what you want me to discuss in the future, and thank you so much for checking out the very first video on my channel.